my nightmare started off promising, happy even. I was working as a live performer on board of a luxury cruise ship. I was singing to a crowd of celebrities and various other influential people. I won't bore you with the details of who I mingled with, but I was very humbled and proud to be included upon such a voyage. The dream took a hard right turn into morbid territory, when at some point during the night, gunshots rang out from the corridors, and there were countless screams of terrified people stampeding over each other to get away. I realized that despite all of our expensive trinkets and years of high-class education and good intentions would not save us. In situations like this, most of us revert into cattle, just stampeding away, driven by instinct and self-preservation. I remember running out onto the deck amongst a crowd of people, hearing automatic weapon fire from somewhere close behind me. Some people were climbing into lifeboats, but I was afraid to climb in myself and possibly stand out as an easy target, so I didn't hesitate to leap directly over the side of the boat. I assumed that I would hit water, but in the darkness, I struck something hard as I landed on my side and hit my head. I discovered that I was on another, much smaller boat. As I struggled to get to my feet, I realized that I was likely on one of the boats the pirates or terrorists had used to catch up to our ship. Horrified that I would encounter another armed man, I grabbed a large wooden pallet that was lying on the deck and threw it over the side, then climbed down into the water on top of it, painfully aware that I had injured my left leg in the fall. As I floated away from the ship, I heaved a sigh of relief, because I knew in the dark I wouldn't stand out as a target. I assumed that the Coast Guard would arrive at any moment, and one of them would pull me to safety. But they never came. As I drifted further and further away from the ship, I began to worry that I may have put myself in a worse situation. I floated so far away I couldn't see the lights of the cruise ship anymore, and I began to panic. I tried to paddle my arms and legs, but I was in that dream state where every move you make feels like you're moving in slow motion. I recall feeling intense pain, which made it difficult to shift position on the pallet. As dawn broke, I realized that I was bleeding from a wound on my head. A red stain had formed on the wooden pallet. I began to scream in terror and desperation, convinced that even such a small amount of blood would attract sharks. And unfortunately, I was correct. Before long, there were several fins circling me on my piece of driftwood. Occasionally, they would swim so close, they would bump into the pallet, as if they were trying to knock me off. In my distraught mind, using unrealistic dream logic, I was determined to do whatever I could to survive. I eased my bad leg into the water. Within seconds, my leg was torn from my body by one of the hungry sharks. I was praying that they would devour it and leave. I didn't need both of my legs to keep singing after this. Then the stupidity of what I had done began to sink in, and I realized I was bleeding so much more now and attracting even more sharks. I tried to make myself as small as possible on the makeshift raft. That's when I felt something crawl across my hand. And that's when I realized that several termites had appeared on my wooden pallet, and they were eating away at the wood. It was at that moment that I knew that I was dead. As I began to sink, I screamed up at the sky in desperation, praying that it would be over quickly. I felt the teeth bite down into me. This is where I assumed most dreams would end. However, mine did not. I remember briefly the sensation of being torn apart, vividly aware that I was in pieces. Then something reached up from the depths with a massive clawed hand and grabbed what was left of me. I saw a giant flash of red eyes and heard a deep hellish voice, loud enough to make my ears ring. Finally, I have you. That's when I finally woke up, an absolute wreck.
I take the subway to work every day. My shift starts just before the sun comes up, so I'm usually one of the only people in the train car for the first several stops. About a year ago, my alarm went off, and after I silenced it, I had one of those weird dreams where my mind woke up and started getting ready for my day when I was actually still asleep. In my dream, I got dressed, gathered my belongings, left my apartment, locked my door, and even bought a coffee from a street vendor just before I got to the train station. Everything was fine on the station platform. I remember scrolling through my phone and looking at imaginary dream messages from my friends. I boarded the train as soon as it pulled in. The first thing I was aware of upon entering the empty train car was the sensation of walking through a cobweb. It caught me right across the face, and I started cursing and wiping my eyes. The doors closed behind me, and the train started moving again. When I opened my eyes, I noticed that there were two other people on board, a man and a woman, standing at the far end of the train just staring at me. They were both older, beyond middle age, and they both had rotten brown teeth and greasy gray hair, and they were both wearing dark green jumpsuits of some kind. I turned and made for the far end of the train car, as far away from them as I could get. I immediately felt around in my jacket for my taser, but to my horror, I couldn't find it, and instead felt my fingers disappear through a hole at the bottom of the pocket. As I raised my head again, I walked through a second cobweb, but this one was much stronger and stopped me in my tracks. I felt something pulling at the skin on my face. I raised my hands in a panic and began frantically fighting against the cobwebs. Before I knew it, my arms were completely ensnared and I couldn't move my upper body. I heard the two strangers cackling as they came towards me from behind. The woman said something along the lines of, Wait, don't kill her yet. I want to see her squirm. Cut her clothes off. I felt a long knife run down my back as my jacket and shirt were torn away. I fought and screamed, the webs holding me in place as I attempted to free myself. When most of my clothes were torn away, I heard the woman say, Now go ahead. And I felt a hand encircle my face, covering my mouth. I bit down on the hand so hard, I woke myself up clenching my jaw. I sat up in bed and realized that I was half an hour late for work. I was so badly shaken that morning that I decided to take an Uber instead, and I made sure that I had my taser with me before leaving my apartment. I live on a mountainside in the middle of nowhere. On two separate occasions, I've witnessed something walking across my property at a distance that looked like a man. During a stormy night, I needed a stiff drink to knock myself out, as the howling of the wind was deafening. My subconscious mind formed a scenario that I never could have constructed if I was awake. I dreamt that a team of army rangers knocked on my door and asked me if I was willing to grant them permission to hunt on my property. I granted them permission under the condition that I was allowed to accompany them. The soldier gave me a concerned look and stated that what they were hunting wasn't something that I could photograph and tell my friends after it was dead. I immediately knew what he was referring to and told them, in that case, all the more reason for me to come because I knew what it looked like. I grabbed my hunting rifle even though all the other men were carrying automatic weapons. There was ten of us all together, and we simply walked off my porch and made our way through the snow and into the woods. Much quicker than I would have guessed, we found tracks down a long ridge line that was within sight of my home, and we followed them down the mountain slope. We spread ourselves out wide as we marched forward in silence, using hand gestures to communicate Myself and two others slid down into a small gully and continued to pursue the tracks. These landmarks all existed in reality and were familiar to me, but the next part was a creation of my own nightmare. We followed the gully down a steep slope 
and came into a clearing with two massive stone pillars. It was like looking at Stonehenge. We spotted a large hairy creature at the far side of the hill. I immediately crouched down and signaled the men with me to do the same. But the creature seemed to sense us watching it. It turned and started wailing a challenging cry. I've hunted for my entire life, but this cry was more terrifying than anything I've ever experienced. Not only did the thing start charging at us at breakneck speed, it began tearing away at its flesh, ripping the fur off of its own body, revealing blood red muscle underneath. I raised my hunting rifle, and the men alongside me did the same, but nobody fired. We attempted twice more as the creature bore down on us, still wailing and tearing at itself, its giant eyes staring directly at us. With a fury so intense, I could feel the hatred vibrating my joints deep within me. The man that was next to me began to panic and started screaming, Eat me before it does! Eat me before it does! Before I could react to the bizarre request, the creature was upon us. It had grown two more pale white arms from its side, and its head had lengthened to something more closely resembling a dragon. It tore the two men to shreds and ate them alive. I didn't know what terrified me more, the savagery or the speed in which it was happening. I was vaguely aware of other men screaming in the woods around me, but I didn't hear a single gunshot. At that point, I knew somehow without even needing to see them, there was more of these things out there, devouring all of us. I didn't even bother to try and escape. Instead, I raised my rifle to my chin and attempted to pull the trigger, but the gun was still jammed. The thing grabbed me and began dragging me back towards its lair. Whatever fate was awaiting me was far worse than anything that was happening to the other men. While being dragged on my back, I pulled out my hunting knife and stabbed myself directly into the eye, which is what finally woke me up. The wind was still roaring outside, and I suspect that it helped amplify the cries of the creature in my dream. The next day I noticed tracks in the snow that stopped about 10 yards short of my bedroom window. We're continuing our deathbed interview with former Gestapo officer Anton Schroeder, a self-admitted war criminal who continued with his own private campaign, hunting Jewish civilians in Italy after the Nazis surrendered to the Allies in 1945. Upon receiving the medical prognosis of having terminal cancer with less than 30 days to live, he agreed to an exclusive interview regarding his time during the war. We left off discussing abandoned Nazi wartime operations, from what I understand, not even the Fuhrer was aware of your final assignment in Switzerland. Tell us more about how the project, codenamed Frostbite, ended. <coughs> Never ended. <coughs> Just delayed. The greatest soldiers were those who would never tire. All of Europe would hear the stomping of their boots as they marched over a sea of the dead. It was horrific beyond comprehension. <coughs> we were afraid, so we sealed them away. But God save those who unearth them. They remember <coughs> their orders. What were their orders? Never die.